Welcome, it's your friendly neighborhood Badger here and I am back for the second update video of the 3.13 announcement uh, talking about all things Echoes of the Atlas. If you didn't see my previous video, there is a link down below in the description and remember to hit that subscribe button to keep updated with all the videos uh, that I will be releasing today and tomorrow and in the future up until the 3.13 release. Today we are talking in this video specifically about the Atlas Passive Trees. Now these were revealed alongside the Echoes of the Atlas expansion and what these are uh, is absolute insanity. Those are my first words for what this is. In a nutshell, I'll try and condense it and then we're going to go really in depth with it. Basically, in each of the eight zones in our Atlas, we get a passive tree to basically enhance modifiers, enhance league mechanics within that region. Now, what does this look like? So as you can see, this is pretty much what it looks like. Uh, and you can see all of these little icons here. We can kind of gain certain things from different leagues with all of these icons. We can see Nico here. We can see a bit of Breach, a big Breach tree here. We can see Harvest, more Harvest over here, some Abyss. Uh, and uh, each different zone is going to have a tree that looks like this. You earn passive points as you progress through your atlas, and it is possible to fully flesh out one atlas tree before you do any else. So target farming certain zones is an idea. That's a very, uh, very much a thing that you can do. We can have a little bit more of an in-depth look here of the eight different zones. Now, the one thing to point out that was talked about in the Q&A with Ziggy D and uh, Chris Wilson himself is that all of these trees are different for each player. What this means is that your Atlas is individual to your account. Now, I don't think we quite know yet whether that's account bound, whether that's league bound, um, but I would suspect it's going to be league bound, potentially even between hardcore, softcore, SSF, that sort of thing. But that might that might cause some problems with like migrating. So it might be just like a kind of each uh, league to league, it resets. There are some uh, bad things and good things about this. We'll get into the concerns later, uh, uh, but we'll keep going over everything else. So as you can see, that's everything there. Moving on, we can have a look at one specific version. This is Glenac Cairns, and this is uh, a, a version that you could potentially get yourself. Uh, but um, these are lots and lots of different mods. So let's just dive headfirst into all of these mods so you can see some things about uh, how this is all gonna interact. So, first of all, let's have a look at this Legion uh, tree here. We've got three different big notables. The first one here is Monumental. Areas have a 10% additional chance to contain a Legion encounter. Straight away, your first passive point means that you've got a 10% extra chance in each of your maps to in encounter Legion. You can then spec off either into face-to-face -to, -face to give 100% more likely to include a general, double the generals, or uh, with a general in areas, have both generals. So you have a double chance to include a general, and if you get a general, you get two generals. And Legion generals in areas drop 100% more timeless splinters. You can already start to see how jam-packed these are. What this is meaning is that we are really going to have so much more control over the league mechanics that we like to run. Continuing on, the last one here is project, uh, Protracted Battle, sorry. Legion encounters have 50% increased duration, so you have a better time to be able to clear it all. And they take 50% increased damage while in stasis. If you find that your build is struggling with clear, this one's going to be absolutely insane for you. Uh, Lock UK just said in chat there that this is an SSF league. Uh, all of the leagues that are happening are really going to be insane SSF leagues, so uh, definitely, definitely think about that. Moving on, uh, we've got some other things like here. Here's just a very small little incursion one. Incursion monsters in areas are at least magic. I, I I can't even fully contain myself with all of this. You might have seen my reaction video to the actual trailer. I was beside myself. I'm trying to compose myself for these videos, but the hype is extremely real. 
the last little thing here, we've got some more stuff. Killing non-resident architects in areas have a 50% chance to add an additional upgrade tier to the surviving architect's room. Crazy for upgrading your corruption rooms or any of, well, any room. Absolutely insane. That basically means that you have one third uh, more uh, effect on everything or one third more of a chance to get that tier three corruption room or everything like that in, in total. I think the calculation works out to be. Contested development, killing resident architects in areas adds their upgrade tier to the surviving architect's room. That is um, uh, absolutely massive as well. Uh, I don't really need to explain that too much other than that's just, it's just bonkers. It's just absolutely bonkers. Um, uh, then we've also got some strongbox stuff here. Uh, twice tempted means areas contain an extra strongbox and strongboxes in areas have a 10% chance to be openable a second time. What? Okay, again, I'm sorry, I'm trying to compose myself, but that is absolutely insane. Then coupled with Tamper Proof, which is basically uh, that uh, that mod on Sextants, meaning that all of your strong boxes are corrupted, all of your strong boxes are at least rare. Uh, this is just absolutely ridiculously insane. Lastly, let's move on to some Beyond. First of all, an extra 3% chance to attract monsters from beyond from Scent of Blood, just more chance. We've then also got Torn Veil. Powerful beyond demons require one fewer portals to summon in areas. I don't think people realize how insane this is to summon uh, beyond bosses and beyond rares. Uh, having one fewer portals means it, it's kind of almost an exponential growth in the amount of beyonds that you will be summoning in zones. Keep in mind, this is gonna make your maps that much more dangerous and that much more uh, crazy. Uh, then the last thing, beyond portals in areas have 100% increased merging radius. Once again, people do not realize how much of an exponential growth this is going to mean that your beyonds have in maps. If you can get scent of blood, 3% chance, then you can get um, uh, like a beyond mob on the atlas, uh, uh, and then you can also get a beyond sextant and beyond on your map. You could potentially have quadruple beyond chance with extra stuff in uh, like Torn Veil. Um, that's pretty insane. Uh, we're gonna quickly go over these ones here as well. I'm sure you wanna have a look at everything here. Uh, so first of all, let's have a look at Harvest. Bountiful Harvest. Harvest monsters in areas grant 200% increased experience. That's absolutely, <laughs> that's absolutely bonkers for, for experience grinders. And harvested plants in areas have 50% chance to spawn an additional monster. Also insane. That's just basically that's just basically an experience node right there, just like that. It's kind of insane. Uh, we then have a look at some breaches. Breaches in areas have 30% increased area of effect, increased area uh, monster density, and granting 50% increased experience. So as you can see here, there's a little bit of a theme on this one. Experience gain. Let's get to 100, baby. This is going to be really insane. Let's have a look at the rest of the Breach ones. Breaches in areas have a 100% increased chance to contain a boss. Wow. Breach bosses in areas drop double Breach Splinters, and Breach bosses defeated in areas have 5% chance to drop a Breach Stone. Wow. That will then couple with within their grasp. Breach bosses have an additional 5% chance, so coupled with this, 10% chance. Then there is a 10% chance for them to be dropped charged, uh, or 9%. So you can basically look at that as like, a, that's a 1% chance every breach to get a charged breach stone. There is then uh, a 0.3% uh, chance to be dropped enriched. And a zero point, so one in 100 breaches, you will drop a breach pure stone, which is absolutely crazy. That's That's really, really insane. Then let's move on to Sulfite, which I think is one of the biggest uh, game changers in the Sulfite grind. Um, so first of all, we've got Rich Veins. Uh, Voltaxic Sulfite Veins and Chests have 10% chance to contain double Sulfite, crazy for gains. That basically just means uh, a 10% more multiplier on your Sulfite, uh, plus 20% increased Sulfite. So a lot more right there. We then have Sulfite Infusion. White tier maps grant 200 additional uh, sulfide on completion, 350 for yellow and 500 for red. The last insane one uh, is this one here. Uh, wait, no, not this one. Uh, oh, sorry, yeah, yeah, this one is the last insane one. 35% increased damage for each Voltaxic Sulfite vein or chest found in areas. Wow. 
That's freaking insane. And 15% increased move speed for each Voltaxic Sulfite vein or chest found in areas. So, this means that your kind of uh, ZHP uh, Sulfite grind is so you need to get through maps quickly. This is just basically affirming that the playstyle of ZHP is a real playstyle and you should be playing it. Um, which is absolutely insane that they're investing uh, uh, skill points into basically saying, keep ZHP delving. We think it's awesome. We love it. Uh, more to the power uh, to those people. That's absolutely insane. We've then got some other stuff here, some more harvest. Bumper crop. Harvest in areas have doubled bonuses to item quantity and rarity. Need I say more? The sacred grove in areas contains an additional harvest. Need I say more? Heart of the Grove, here we go. The Sacred Grove in areas has 100% increased chance to contain the Heart of the Grove, which is the Oshabi fight. Harvest in areas have a 10% chance for the unchosen crop to not wilt. Um, do we know exactly what that means? The unchosen crop to not wilt? Uh, I'm not sure exactly what that means. Maybe um, if you don't choose a crop uh, in your harvest, it has a chance to be spawned in the next harvest that you get or anything like that. And then lastly, we've got some uh, Abyss here. Uh, is it? Uh, no, this looks like, uh, yeah, it looks like Abyss, right? It looks like Abyss. Up to 20 rare monsters in areas are possessed and their minions are touched. Uh, you you got to choose two and one will will. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, you choose one of the crops, you might choose the second one. Gotcha. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so thank you, chat, for helping me out there with all of that. So that is uh, a big overview of the types of things that we're expecting from the Atlas passive trees. We did a big in-depth look into all of this. Now it's time for me to talk about my concerns uh, about uh, this uh, Atlas uh, passive tree update. First of all, it is a lot of information to gather. It's a lot of information to choose uh, and newer players are gonna really struggle with this addition. As you may have been listening, if you're a new player and you were listening to um, all of this kind of stuff, there were probably a lot of words that were flying over your head. If you're in chat and you're new, let me know if things were flying over your head. So reading all of this is going to be like opening an encyclopedia uh, in a different language and trying to decipher that for new players. Um, it's gonna be really, really interesting. Trying to cross reference with the wiki, all of this kind of stuff to really get your head around it. Uh, however, it's also going to help people know what all of these mechanics are and their specific choices are increasing chances of those things happening. And we're going to be able to see it in real time in all of the maps that we're running, which is really interesting. The other concern that I do have is it was mentioned in the Q&A with Chris Wilson and Ziggy D is that these atlases uh, or atlas passive trees, sorry, are specific to you as a player and specific to each zone. So what that does mean is say uh, Larry, uh, my friend Larry is running his Lex Proxima. And my friend Larry uh, gets some really awesome stuff for harvest and and uh, uh, like sulfite uh, and maybe uh, some breach as well. But then I run my Lex Proxima and I realize that my tree is totally different. I'm getting other stuff like Abyss, I'm getting uh, you know, uh, some legion, all of that kind of stuff. And I'm like, his rewards, I actually like his rewards better. That's kind of annoying. Um, and then there might be a little bit of FOMO uh, effect happening with all of that. Some people might be saying, hey, my Atlas is freaking bugged. I got some terrible stuff. Um, what's happening here? I want an Atlas reset, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, that's a really big concern for me that there's going to be uh, a lot of disparity or asymmetrical gameplay between atlases for people feeling like their atlas might not be as good as other people's. Uh, the other thing though um, is, uh, the, the, the other thing around all of that is you can obviously respec these atlas points and put them in other places, uh, but it's still not going to mean that you can fully reset each like atlas you can't just keep going like if you've got a bad uh, bad atlas passive skill tree you can't just oh let's just reset it let's try and get for some other mods the plus side to it though it does mean that obviously you have a chance of getting some really cool stuff and it makes your gameplay uh uh very unique to you your play style of how your atlas is going to evolve and how you want to be socketing your watchstones everything like that it's very unique to how you want to play 
uh, which is really, really uh, intriguing. That is a plus side to it all. Um, that's pretty much my concerns with all of this. Um, the last thing is my concern is how easy or difficult it will be to actually respec your uh, Atlas passive tree. We don't really know the uh, in-depth uh, numbers on how easy or difficult that is going to be. I hope it's not too easy. That's my main thing. Uh, I hope it's not too easy to just respec out, respec in. Say, for example, the people who are massively juicing every single map, they might be like, oh yeah, I'm just going to respec out of this and respec into this for this map because this layout's better for this kind of, you know, uh, this kind of, uh, uh, what, what's the word? This kind of uh, league mechanic. There we go. I got it. Uh, sorry, I've been talking a lot today. Um, that's, that's my biggest concern that it's not too easy. I don't care if it's too difficult because I kind of like the idea of locking it in and that being your Atlas encounter, that sort of thing. Yeah, not easy, but not too hard um, is, you know, the middle ground there is maybe you'll be able to respec one point every 100 maps or something like that. Uh, like, like one point being one notable point, so two points. I think that's, you know, that's just my say on it all. That is pretty much all I have to say about the Atlas passive trees. There are more videos coming with all of uh, the ascendancy changes, uh, talking about the heist implementation and the harvest implementation. We've got a bunch of other stuff as well coming. So definitely check those videos out. I'll include the link to um, the, uh, all the other videos in form of the playlist down below. So you can click on that and save the playlist. Once again, remember to subscribe. Hit that bell so you get updates of all of these videos. And we're doing all of these videos live on Twitch at the moment. So if you want to come and see firsthand what we're doing, twitch.tv slash thisisbadgergaming. Come over uh, and check it out. Have a bit of fun with chat uh, talking about everything here. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. And until next time, Badger out.